Um, yep. Yeah, so, uh, so for right now, I'm, uh, I was told, you know, I'm playing right guard. But um, you know, at the same time, anything can can happen and change, and I'm more willing to to play whatever position, wherever they see fit. Um, but as of right now, within this first practice, I was playing right guard. Hello, everyone. Welcome in. That opening clip was Wyatt Davis, who was made available to the media following his first practice with his new team, the Minnesota Vikings, from four days ago. Um, we'll be talking about what he said in that clip in a minute here very briefly because what he had to say was very important to the future of this team and uh, his first year as a rookie in the NFL. But before we get to that, quick aside, I want to talk about the Minnesota Wild very briefly uh, because last night uh, last night they unfortunately did not win. They fell to the Golden Knights by, by a score of 3-1. to one. And while I while it wasn't the outcome that I think we all desired, I'm, I'm still very glass half full you know, taking a glass half full approach or mentality to the series, because the way I look at it, they're playing really well. It was a very good game, very entertaining game. Um, they, they definitely belong in this playoff bracket. They definitely belong on the ice this postseason. And uh, we stole one from them in game one uh, at, on, uh, you know, in, in their home stadium. So Cam Talbot wins the first game. Mark andre Fleury wins the second one last night. I'm still very upbeat, very excited for this series. I think they can definitely pull this off. Uh, the series now shifts to Minnesota, where we'll have 4,500 people in attendance, home ice, uh, you know, and stealing one on the road is what you got to do when you don't have home field advantage or home ice advantage in a playoff series. So I, I think everything is uh, going great so far. Didn't get the outcome that uh, that we wanted last night. I would have been very surprised had, would, had we been able to steal two in a row on the road from uh, Las Vegas. So, you know, I I'm not too disappointed with the outcome, but I think we're going to get the series. I, I really do. I've got confidence in this team. They look really good compared to years past, especially for, uh, you know, uh, the first two games of a playoff series. So all that out of the way, our quick update on the Minnesota Wild. Today, we're talking about Wyatt Davis, who was the third third round selection of the Minnesota Vikings, uh, 86 selection overall. Uh, offensive guard from Ohio State uh, measures in at six foot three, 315 pounds. Those are official pro day numbers. Redshirt Jr. decided to skip his senior year to declare for the draft. Um, let's uh, a little bit of background slash history on Wyatt Davis real quick. He attended St. John Bosco High School in California. And the only reason I'm really wanting to bring that up is because interesting, you know, trivia nugget is that he blocked for Josh Rosen in 2014 during a sophomore season. Um, he played guard and offensive tackle in high school. His team won about 38 games uh, during that stretch. Uh, he was a five-star recruit at the guard position in the top-ranked offensive guard in the 2017 draft class ahead of his soon-to-be teammate, Josh Myers, who played center for Ohio State. I don't remember where he got picked this year, but I know he was uh, drafted um, this year as well. Uh, Wyatt Davis chose Ohio State over Alabama, Michigan, and Notre Dame, and I think most people believe that that has to do with uh, Urban Meyer. Uh, his father, Dwayne, uh, he, he comes from, you know, a family of football players. His, his brother played football. Uh, his, uh, I think it was Washington or Washington State. Uh, Dwayne played football for Missouri. His father, uh, career uh, didn't go anywhere because of injuries. Um, but you may know him or you may not know him, uh, you know, sort of another trivia nugget here, as the actor who played Alvin Mack in the movie The Program. So um, very interesting to learn about Wyatt Davis and his, uh, you know, family lineage when it comes to the sport of football recently. Um, it's been, it's been, uh, an interesting, uh, you know, sort of look back at the times that I've watched that movie uh, several times and, uh, didn't really know too much about any of the guys in it, but, uh, now, now we all do, which is fun. Uh, he played 36 games for his career at Ohio State, 24 starts, all at the right guard position. And that's important because of what we talked about at the beginning of the video and what he said, in that opening clip uh, during the press conference after his first practice, because since then he's been primarily practicing at right guard. And I think that that is the right move for the Vikings because the alternative is you play him out of position on the left side. And I think we need to be more um, cautious about how we talk about moving players in their positions, because it's not just, you know, that simple for every single person to be like, oh yeah, he plays guard. There's got to be not much difference between left and right. Well, maybe there is more nuance than we think there is to it. And some guys, and I come from a baseball background myself as a pitcher who, you know, and, and they're one of the uh, pitchers are uh, the biggest collection of people on the planet who are absolutely creatures of habit where everything has to be the same all the time. And, you know, uh, it's just got to be, 
a, a routine, right, in order to maintain a, a high level of competitiveness. I don't want to uh, just insinuate or assume that somebody can just easily switch to another position on the football field. I don't think that that's doing anybody any fairness. Uh, so, But I do think that this is the right move to keep him at the right guard position because they won't be playing him out of position, and it keeps you from having two rookies on the left side of the offensive line. So what we're looking at right now heading into, um, you know, the – the the pre the not the preseason but like training camp OTAs and all that sort of stuff is a potential offensive starting line where we go left to right Christian Derisaw, Ezra Cleveland, Garrett Bradbury, Wyatt Davis, and Brian O'Neill. Um, right now, that sounds about what I would predict to be the opening day uh, week one starting offensive line versus the Cincinnati Bengals uh, when they when the season begins. Uh, that makes a whole bunch of sense to me. I, I think Ezra Cleveland ha has really had a rough go of it, you know, since he was since he was drafted because he was drafted as a tackle. They play him at right guard. He does okay, and now he's going to be learning another new position, albeit he does have some experience on the interior now at the next level. Uh, so it remains to be seen how the rest of this offensive line is going to look is going to work out because right now the only uh, you know real anchor or staple is Brian O'Neill, who's a pretty good right tackle. Everybody else is kind of a question mark heading into the season, but I'm confident in Wyatt Davis being the right guard of this team because he's, that's where his most, you know, experienced position is uh, since he joined Ohio State. You know, 36 games and 24 starts at the right guard position. Absolutely uh, smart not to sort of get cute with it and just plug him into the position he's comfortable with. 2019, first team All-American and first All-Big Ten 2020, again, first team All-American. Remington Pace, Big uh, Ten Offensive Lineman of the Year. First team All-Big Ten and a team captain for the this last season. So you, you, you hear all the history. You hear all of, um, you know, the awards and, you know, what he's done uh, at, at the college level. And you ask yourself, why did he fall in the draft? And I think that the answer to that question is pretty simple. Injury concerns. Uh, this past season... Uh, he experienced two knee injuries uh, on the same. I believe it was the left knee injured against Michigan in December, and then he re-aggravated that injury uh, during the uh, national championship game against Alabama. Prior to the 2020 season, in the whole shitstorm that we had to go through with the Big Ten and the pandemic, uh, I, I think most mock drafts and most projected big boards had Wyatt Davis as a top 10, top 15 prospect and easily the number one interior offensive lineman on the board. Uh, it didn't quite work out that way because uh, he falls to 86 in the draft. Uh, Dane Brugler of The Athletic, who publishes The Beast every year that covers, um, you know, just two to 300 pages of NFL draft guide information, had him ranked at 63 overall. So he even fell below some of the experts who I routinely follow uh, their project, their projections. So uh, to get him at 86 overall is a hell of a steal. Um, so I think it's likely the injury concerns with the left knee, and maybe there's other things, you know, in the scouting reports that you can point to as a red flag or an area of concern. But I think, you know, in, in this situation, Occam's razor is likely the best, uh, the the best approach to this. You know, the the answer that has the fewest assumptions. And when it comes to injuries, I think that that fits the bill. Um, am I concerned about the injuries myself? No, I'm not. I'm excited to have Wyatt Davis in the building because the alternative is either Drew Samia or Dakota Dozier. And after a year of uploading videos to this channel, talking nonstop about the Minnesota Vikings, I'm ready to be done with that conversation once and for all. So hopefully we don't have to relitigate or revisit that all too much. Uh, I will give you the um, the, the summary line of uh, the scouting report by Dane um, that he uh, posts or that he published in his draft guide. Overall, Wyatt Davis must play under control, improve snap-to-snap -snap consistency, but his hands, anchor, and finishing skills are NFL-ready, will compete for immediate snaps. And I sort of paraphrased there because I didn't want to regurgitate four sentences that were very lengthy. Um, so, final thoughts, overall thoughts about this. Number one, thank you for finally addressing the offensive line in the NFL draft, even though you pigeonholed yourself into needing to do this, but... You trade down in the first round, you get Christian Derisaw anyway, you pick up two additional third round picks that wind up being, one of them winds up being Wyatt Davis. So, uh, yes, th this is fantastic. Um, I'm very excited to have 
uh, new players on the offensive line. I do think we need to keep our expectations in check because we don't quite know how they're going to assimilate to the next level. Um, so we can't just look on paper and decide that, well, it looks really great on paper. Our expectations can go up because that's how it should translate on the field because it doesn't always work out that way. Remember, we are dealing with an offensive line that's going to have two rookies, two players who are suspect at best, uh, you know, Ezra Cleveland playing out of position for the second year in a row, Garrett Bradbury, who hasn't been the greatest of draft picks that we've had in the past couple of years, uh, not a very good uh, career arc for him so far. And then Brian O'Neill, who we've already mentioned as the, the you know, the stalwart right tackle who we've uh, come to rely on. So um, overall, Wyatt Davis, um, you know, a year ago projected to go in the first round. We get him in the third uh, it was very. It was not a very good interior offensive lineman class uh, this year. So the fact that we were still able to get Wyatt Davis makes me incredibly happy. Um, uh, I think most of the first round predictions and projections we had going into this was, oh, you know, get Rashawn Slater at 14, move him to guard. Uh, get Elijah Vera Tucker, move him to guard. There was a lot of talk about moving offensive tackles inside due to size or, you know, strengths or skill sets, whatever the case may be. Um, but we get a pure guard, somebody who is pure at the position, played 36 games, 24 starts at right guard. That is his bread and butter. And I think that that is the best route to go when we are talking about upgrading an offensive line where the interior was the absolute worst part of everything that happened to them last year. You know, Riley Reef was a solid left tackle. Brian O'Neill, solid right tackle. It's just the interior needs fixed. And I think we're on our way to doing that with Wyatt Davis who is projected to be the starting right guard for the Minnesota Vikings in 2021. So that's going to do it for this video. Let me know what you think of the pick. Uh, let me know what you think of the offensive line so far going forward. And uh, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.